frequencies and its uh, capability to bear, particularly when the questions are coming up, we have so many things about 5G to be known. Yet, after that, the things are not stopping. They are moving ahead and going towards 6G. So in such a time, it is very essential that we all are aware of the establishments which are going on in 5G direction and also ahead. So I again welcome you all, uh, so far as the department is concerned, to those uh, participants who are new to this webinar, I just wanted to inform one thing that uh, the department is having a special antenna lab now, which is uh, uh, given by Modrov. And this uh, lab has got special facility of testing antennas up to 4G capability, of course. But because of uh, the research is still going on in 4G side, we have plenty many chances. And we are trying for 5G, as Barbia sir is moving towards that also. Recently, he has published some publications in 5G side. So he will be definitely letting you know about all that. But we have a lab especially so that the research Search work can go on in our lab for your antenna testing job also. So I, I especially thank to Vavare sir and Kaula sir, particularly Vavare sir to initiate this activity of uh, bringing this lab into our department, which has proven to be so nice and so useful for others also. Many of the researchers are now proceeding towards this and trying to find their results and measurements done so that their papers also can be published at the same time good research work can come out. So thank you again. Malviya sir, I will not take much time. Please go ahead and proceed with your Chawla sir, thank you so much sir for joining us. Chawla sir, uh, I let you know first that Chawla sir has really initiated Malviya sir for his research work. So I, I uh, on behalf of Malviya sir, I really wish to give uh, thank to you so that our researcher has now been prepared and is contributing to the department. Of course, the contribution also goes to you, sir. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, I thank my uh, gurus, teachers, Professor P.D. Vyavare sir, Anjana Jain madam, Anjula Tayadam madam, Vyavare sir, uh, Chawla sir, Vinita Chaudhary ma'am, SR Mansure sir. So thank you. Now, uh, all the participants are also welcome because they are also the active part of my presentation and definitely the success of this uh, webinar depends on uh, how they are able to get a knowledge from uh, uh, this presentation. So thank you all. Now let us start with my presentation. So first of all, let us check uh, that whether the slides are uh, visible or not. So am I audible? Yes, sir. Audible. Yes. Yes. Okay. The lights are completely visible or not? Visible, sir. Okay. So shall we start? Shall we start? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so uh, good morning, everyone. So I am uh, giving a presentation today on uh, beamforming techniques for modern wireless communication. Uh, this whole webinar is uh, dedicated to my friend, late uh, uh, Mr. Anwar Kriyasa, who expired last year in uh, Britain on the 15th of April. So uh, let us uh, start uh, with beamforming now. So if we look at the wireless communication definitely 
the communication between the transmitter and the receiver can be done with the help of the multiple paths. So paths may be treated because of the sinusoid communication, because of reflection, because of diffraction, or because of scattering. The question is that how the receiver is able to get the uh, uh, reliability or the high data rate. So this depends on the uh, different types of antennas. Out of these antennas, we have the different varieties. Like uh, we have the single input, single output type of antenna system where the single element or the single microchip page is connected to the transmitter as well as the single microchip page is connected to the receiver. So see, single microchip page is known as the CISO or single input or single output. And definitely this will work efficiently in the line of sight communication. But in present scenario, we have the different type of obstacle between the transmitter and the receiver. So for that, we always require the non-line of sight communication. And that's why CISO is not efficient on that places. So we always use the multiple input, multiple output antenna system. My field of specialization is uh, uh, the MIMO in, uh, uh, transmitter and the receivers are the MIMO antenna designs for the 4G and the 5G as well as for the terahertz. So now MIMO is capable in providing the high data rate. Now the question is that what is the need of the high data rate? Definitely we are using internet as well as we are using WhatsApp as well as well as we are using Facebook or the Twitter as well as we are uh, uh, automating our so many uh, home appliances with the help of the internet. So definitely a single device like our mobile is used to control these other devices. Definitely the distribution of the data can be done. So that's why we always require the high data rate. Now the question is that MIMO can provide a high data rate. Definitely this can improve the BER as well as this can also provide us uh, reliability because uh, this works uh, in non-line of sight communication. So, so many paths will exist in between the transmitter and the receiver and definitely in absentia of two, three, four paths, uh, any of the path can be accessible and we can get the continuity in the signaling. So multiple trans uh, antennas at the transmitter as well as at the receivers are required and this can be completed with the help of the MIMO antennas. Uh, excuse me, may I audible and visible? Excuse me. Sir, you yeah, are audible and visible also. Yeah, My audible. slides are complete. Malveji, the slide is a little big. Okay. Ashwin, uh, Ashwin, can you do something? Yes, sir. yes. Uh, uh, let us check now, sir. Okay. Sir, pin. Okay. Sir, pin. 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 Sir, Yes, now it is okay. Okay. So, ha, so yeah, uh, yeah. thank you. Now I am able to see complete. Okay, sir. So 4G uh, uh, has promised to provide the 1 million best stations for the outdoor and indoor application. Yeah. Right. But the increasing yeah. demand, exponentially growing demand of the mobiles and the wireless is the single matter at the challenge. So in that case, the 5G and problem of the 4G. So 5G itself is built on IEEE S0.1.1 protocol. And it's aimed to provide the high data rates, much better data rates, or at least three times of the data rates of the 4G. Now, we can think about the low mobility user as well as for the high mobility users. There's a low mobility it user. Hello, uh, sir. I, I request to the uh, I request to the audiences to so please uh, mute your uh, microphones. So data rate of the 5G technology for low mobility users are expected to be the 50 gigabits per second and 5 gigabits per second for the high mobility users. Now, let us look at the massive MIMO. Definitely, the massive MIMO and the smart antennas are the part of the 5G. And what we are expecting that anyhow, in any of the situation, either in line of sight communication, either in non line of sight communication, the user must get the full uh, uh, coverage of the uh, 
data or will come in the range of the signaling. So this way, uh, MIMO is also able to provide the beamforming and differently the beamforming techniques are also used. So beamforming techniques will uh, be used to provide the coverage of the data in a intended direction. And definitely if the intended direction is desired, so in other directions, the interferences should be reduced or the frequency re should be done to provide the full coverage or coverage or the high uh, range are the coverage of the user or the group of the users, right? So we are dealing with the multipath propagation and definitely the multipath scattering may be done here between the transmitter and the receiver, but it's still the high data rates are desirable and which can be provided with the help of the 5G. So beamforming technique is also the part of the 5G and this is used to provide us the high data rates. Now let us look at the uh, scenarios uh, between the so, uh, single input, single output are the single patch antenna and the multi antenna system like the MIMO. So single input, single output or the single page is unable to provide the high data rate because uh, in 4G, if you look at the 4G, so 1 Gbps data rate was required, but the bandwidth required in the uh, single patch antenna was 250 megahertz and the spectral efficiency uh, was 4 bits per second. So it, it was a large wastage a very big vestige of the spectrum because we have to pay the large money or the big money for the uh, heavy spectrum. So that's why the CISO is unable to provide the high data range with the spectrum saving as well as with the power saving. And uh, if you look at the MIMO, so 20 megahertz of the bandwidth is sufficient to provide the 1 Gbps of the data rate. So if you look at the 5G, 5G has the 100 megahertz of the minimum bandwidth and 1 gigahertz of the higher bandwidth is reserved for uh, 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 more than 6 gigahertz of the frequency band application in the 5G. So we are easily uh, get the high data rate in MIMO as well as in the 5G. Now, if you look at the single element or the single page, so that will work in the serial communication, but the MIMO will work on the parallel communication. Similarly, if you look at the variation in the data rate in third point, so we find that variation in the data rate can be seen with respect to the variation in the bandwidth of the CISO. But again, this is a large vestige of the money uh, to get the big spectrum. And that's why the MIMO is capable on the places to multiply or to get n times of the uh, uh, data rate of the single input, single output. Similarly, if you look at the capacity, so definitely the capacity uh, in the single patch antenna is dependent on Shannon's uh, capacity theorem that is given by the uh, bandwidth multiplied by the log 2 into 1 plus signal to noise ratio. Now the question is that if you want to increase the capacity in the single patch antenna, so definitely uh, you have to increase the power because the signal to noise ratio is dependent on uh, the power. So we find that there is a logarithmic increase in the capacity with increase in the power. But again, we have to pay the large money for high power. And that's why this is again a very big vestige of the money. So now the CISO has number of drawbacks and these other drawbacks can be solved with the help of the MIMO antennas because the MIMO has a linear increase of the capacity. Capacity is uh, uh, shown by uh, number of streams multiplied by the capacity of the uh, CISO antenna in case of the MIMO antenna. So number of streams are dependent on that how many uh, input or how many output uh, we are using in case of the design MIMO antenna. So that we have a two cross two uh, MIMO antenna. So definitely the number of streams are four here. So capacity of the MIMO antenna will be four times of the capacity of the CISO. So definitely the MIMO is very, very much uh, uh, better than the single patch antenna because MIMO has a multiple patch antennas and the MIMO will behave as a single antenna. So these are capable in providing the beam uh, uh, strength as well as the beam forming also. Now higher signal to line ratios are expected in case of the line antennas in comparison with the single patch antenna. Similarly, the spectral efficiencies are very, very high. Uh, for 10 cross 10 MIMO, we have the 50 bits per second per hertz of the spectral efficiency, whereas in case of the single patch antenna, uh, we have 6 bits per second per hertz of the spectral efficiency 
uh, and that is limited. So this why the MIMO is much better than the CISO and definitely the MIMO is capable to be used or we are using in the massive MIMO antennas as well as in uh, 5G antennas as well as in uh, single user MIMO as well as in the multi-user MIMO. So multi-user MIMO is a part of the massive MIMO and uh, MIMO is also uh, used in 5G to form the beam forming. Now my question is that uh, how the CISO and MIMO and arrays can be differentiated. So now uh, after the discussion of uh, uh, CISO means single page antenna and uh, uh, MIMO, let's come to the array antenna. So array antenna means a combination of the similar or the dissimilar elements. Elements are the pages which are arranged in some manner to get a single beam of the radiated individual elements. Right. So a strong radiation pattern can be formed. These arrays having the different elements in the form of the patches can be fed with the single input or can be fed with a different input, can be fed with the uh, same amplitude, can be fed with the same amplitude and different phases. Right. So depending on the requirement, we can uh, uh, use the arrays. So arrays are the uh, most important part of the 5G because the 5G is dependent on a high gain, high directivity as well as very high value of the signal to noise ratio. And definitely uh, if you look at uh, uh, the beam forming, so beam forming uh, uh, can be used in terms of the array. So array is nothing, that is a collection of the patches in certain manner and may be fed with the same phase or with a different phase, right? So our ultimate aim uh, to use the array antennas is to find out the shaping of the radiation wow. pattern. So individual patches in the array show the different, different radiation fields and finally the total radiation field will show a single beam of the radiation pattern to cover uh, the user or the users in a particular direction. So these arrays are also used to cancel out the interference in the backward direction or uh, in other direction in the form of the side lobes or the back lobe. Similarly, the arrays can be steered to get the concentration of the uh, radiation pattern or the beam in a particular direction. So our ultimate aim is to reduce the interference and that's why we always want to maximize the signal to uh, interference and the noise ratio. So arrays can be used in broadcasting, beam forming and optical phase arrays, radio frequency identification uh, systems and weather research programs. And there are so many applications, there is no end because in the 5G array is the most, most important part. So now active arrays are very close to the MIMO because they have the ability to control the phase and the amplitude. Uh, why there is need of uh, controlling the phase and the amplitude? Because we want to control the beam, we want to control the particular user or group of users in a particular direction and that can be done with the help of uh, the variation in the phase as well as in the amplitude, right? So now what we are doing here that we want to control the beam weight, right? Now, if you look at the final uh, are the total field produced by an antenna array, so definitely that will be the vector sum of the fields produced by the individual antennas of the array system. Now, arrays can show the better quality of the signaling in transmit and receive systems. Now, if you look at or if we compare uh, data, what should be the gain of a single page or uh, the four pages connected in an array. So I have this example that the page antenna with the four page, uh, sorry, array antenna with the four page antennas produce a 10 dB of the gain, while the single page antenna provides a 6 dB of the gain. So definitely uh, this is uh, at least 1.6, 1.7 times of the gain provided by the uh, microchip page antenna arrays in comparison with the CISO or single element. So I'm audible. My voice is clear. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, yes. The slides are uh, completely visible. Yes, sir. Slides yes. are visible. Okay. Thank you.
So now uh, the array equations are used to combine the fields and finally we can find out that the different different electric fields are combined to get uh, the ET that is uh, in case of uh, the shown uh, example that we have the two fields created by the two uh, patch antennas in uh, two uh, element array antenna. So total ET is given by the sum of the E1 plus ET, uh, E1 plus E2. Similarly, the array factor is because of these two elements and definitely this will decide the shape of uh, the beam right so somebody wants to read uh, more about the arrays so there are so many types of arrays like the Chebyshev array binomial array and uh, there are so many things are given in the book of the Balani C.A. Balani's so please go through the book of uh, C.A. Balani's antenna theory uh, analysis and design for the further uh, reading of the array antennas and the corresponding realization that how they can be used or how their amplitudes and the fast can be uh, changed for making uh, the arrays or the beam forming antennas. So now uh, let us look at the scenario that because of these uh, arrays the 5G has become very much faster because we are expecting that the uh, much better than the 1 Gbps data rate can be expected in 5G. So if you look at the back generation, so in 1st G there was uh, uh, a speed of the 2.4 kilobits per second and definitely that was able to communicate for the uh, wise or for the wise transmission. In 2G we uh, get the speed of the 64 kilobits per second and definitely that was capable in sending or transmitting or receiving the digital voice and the simple data. Crazy, there was an extension in the uh, data rate, so 2000 kilobits per second, or the 2 megabits per second was the uh, uh, data rate in case of the 3G, and that was capable in uh, video, voice, etc. 4G became much faster because LTE is a part of the 4G, LTE advance is a part of the 4G, and definitely the speed was. 10 to the power 9 means 1 gigabits per second. So 1 gigabits per second was some uh, data rate that was assumed in the long term evolution or in 4G so that we can uh, cover different types of application uh, like the uh, live uh, conferencing, video, voice communication or we can uh, move in a car as well as we can uh, play the games etc and can get the continuity of the signaling. So 5G, definitely this is dependent on the real world application. So now look at the scenario that how many real world application we can expect as there is no end of the real world applications because every day we are, we are getting the new fields and definitely those new fields are able to show us our strength and our uh, wireless communication facilities are the designing of the antennas. So if you look at the 5G application, that why we are expecting more than one uh, GBPS of the data for the 5G. So we are uh, now uh, using the self-driving cars. So Tesla is using the self-driving cars and definitely there is no driver. Similarly, we have the logistic services, we have the toll connection system, we have the real-time remote control, as well as we have the industry 4.0 factory automation. Similarly, we have the virtual 3D presence as well as remote diagnosis. Similarly, we have the real-time clouding, uh, cloud access, VR, virtual reality gaming, smart clothing. So there are so many applications and these applications definitely require a very large data rate. So 1GB base is not sufficient to cover these type of applications because the delays are very, very important. So delays are minimized in the 5G. So now let's move further. So these applications, definitely there should be certain project uh, to uh, uh, cover this application. In case of the LTE, we used the third generation partnership project and it provided the uh, standard of the uh, 4G LTE. Now, International Telecommunication Union, ITU, sets the different types of standards and the limits for the particular type of wireless communication. That may be the antenna, that may be the uh, signal processing or anything which comes over the umbrella of the International Telecommunication Union. Now, 5G is covered under the 5G infrastructure, public, uh, private-public partnership 
and that is also known as the 5G PPP, right? So jointly they are working together to provide the fixed standard for the 5G. But this is not so easy because we are using the smart homes, buildings, smart cities, 3D video, work and play in the cloud, remote medical services, virtual and augmented reality, massive machine to machine communication for industry automation. So definitely the standards cannot be fixed uh, uh, at the first sight. There are always evolution to get the betterment of the services for the uh, uh, every class of the application. Now let us look at the uh, International Telecommunication Union's uh, set standard for the 5G antennas of the arrays. So we are using the uh, video streaming or the conferencing virtual reality. We require the uplink of the 10 gigabits per second as well as 20 gigabit per second of the uh, uh, data rate. Similarly, the spectral efficiencies as compared to the MIMO are better in case of the 5G arrays. So 30 bits per second per hertz is a downlink uh, uh, spectral efficiency. 15 bits per second per hertz is the uplink uh, spectral efficiency. Now my question is that what does it mean by the spectral efficiency? So if you look at the point number three in this slide, so uh, you find that uh, the unit of the spectral efficiency is given by the bits per second per hertz. So bits per second is nothing. That is the data rate. So data rate divided by the hertz means bandwidth so how much data you can transmit how much data you can receive in a particular bandwidth is known as the spectral efficiency so definitely the MIMO has a high efficiency uh, spectral efficiency in comparison to the single patch antenna similarly the arrays have or 5g antennas have the better spectral efficiencies in comparison with the MIMO antennas so now look at uh, another scenario that the latency may be less than or between 1 to 4 uh, millisecond for the users as well as 10 to 20 millisecond for the control plane or for the system. Maximum bandwidth is reserved or expected to be 1 gigahertz after the 6 gigahertz of the 5G frequency band. Minimum bandwidth is reserved for 5G is at least uh, 100 megahertz. So if you look at the scenario that what was the bandwidth of the 4G LTE, so definitely in 4G LTE, the bandwidth was scalable. The bandwidth in the 4G was started with the 5 megahertz, 10 megahertz, 15 megahertz, 20 megahertz. So these bandwidth are definitely uh, costlier, and that's why in LTE the bandwidth was reserved, uh, uh, and it was 20 megahertz scalable, right? But here in the 5G, we are expecting so many services real-time applications, so bandwidth cannot be uh, fixed up to the 20-30 megahertz. We require the very big spectrum and that's why at least the 100 megahertz of the frequency spectrum is expected in the 5G to cover some real-time applications and for the coverage of the most of the real-time applications, we always require the bandwidth in 5G and it must be approximately 1 gigahertz. Now, the mobility in case of the uh, rural rural environment is expected to be the 500 kilometer uh, per hour network reliability so network reliability means how the signal is covered how the transmitter and the user uh, receivers are connected with lowest of the latency so network reliability uh, again shows the continuation in the signaling that means no loss of the signaling so this reliability is the issue of the non line of sight communication or the complete link, virtual link between the transmitter and the receiver. Definitely the transmitter is a bus station and the receiver is a mobile station or a particular service through which we can operate in something. Now, the number of devices in the 5G uh, are 1 million or 10 to the power 6 per square mile. 1 mile is 1.6 kilometer. So in 1.6, uh, into 1.6 kilometer square, we are expecting that the one million means 10 to the power 6 uh, uh, number of devices can be connected okay now if you look at the efficiency this is the biggest matter uh, of the concern in today's scenario our biggest challenge that what should be the power consumption or the energy consumption in case of the 5g uh, to cover these real-time applications so definitely there is no very big uh, 
consumption of the energy that is 10 percent of the current consumption done in the 4G LTE. So now let's move further. Shall we move further? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Now, if you look at that, how many bands are available in the 5G? So, uh, first of all, we have to look at that how many bands were in 4G LTE. There were 44 bands starting from 0 0.3, 0 0.4 gigahertz, 0 0.5 gigahertz, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 gigahertz as well as 1.8 gigahertz, 1.9 gigahertz, 2.2 gigahertz, 2.3, 2.4 gigahertz, up to the 3.5 gigahertz. So those bands were covered in the 4G LTE and definitely in 4G LTE we were covering the GSM, GPS, GRPS, uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, 2.4 gigahertz of the W lane, 3.5 gigahertz, 2.5 gigahertz of the uh, WiMAX, as well as uh, 5.2 gigahertz, 5.8 gigahertz of the W lane band, as well as uh, as the uh, 5.5 gigahertz of the WiMAX band. But now the question is slightly different because uh, we must control the things. Uh, so 5G has defined so many new bands. So in the lower frequency spectrum, that is also known as the FR1. We have the two bands denoted by 3.3. To 4.2 gigahertz and 4.4 to 4.99 gigahertz, and the high spectrum, uh, high frequency spectrum covers from 24 gigahertz to the 70 gigahertz of the spectrum. So you may uh, look at uh, this slide: the 24.25 to 27.5 gigahertz, as well as uh, there are so many uh, frequency bands under the 30 gigahertz, as well as from 30 to 50 gigahertz or from 50 to 50 gigahertz. So, uh, uh, we cannot say that uh, uh, this is a fixed uh, uh, guideline given by the ITU for the 5G uh, lower frequency spectrum or the higher spectrum, uh, frequency spectrum because there are so many services. So, what is happening here that the government or all the uh, uh, companies which are using the 5G are planning to provide the solution of the 5G in correlation are in collaboration with the 2G, 3G and 4G so that the lower bands of this 2G, 3G and 4G can also be used along with the new uh, assigned bands of the 5G. So now uh, let us start the beam forming now. So we have covered a uh, single patch antenna or the CISO as well as uh, multiple input multiple uh, uh, arrays as well as we have covered the 5G and the requirement in the different band. Forming and uh, it's a different techniques in how the beam forming antennas can be formed with the help of the MIMO or with the help of. Uh, so now let us uh, start with the definition that what is uh, mean by the beam forming. So beam forming is just like to provide the signal in a particular direction, like the traffic signaling that uh, one user can go through that uh, uh, signal or the other user can go through that signal. So beam forming creates a beam in a particular direction. So beam is nothing. That is a radiation pattern, narrow beam radiation pattern. So an uh, intended user can be covered with the help of the beam forming. Right. So a single beam may be there, but if you have the multiple users, so multiple beams can be created. Now the main beam is desired in a particular direction. So definitely if you are uh, sending a main beam in a particular direction. So a strong signals at a strong electric field, at a strong directivity, at a strong gain is expected in a particular direction to cover that intended user. So definitely we have to nullify uh, the undesired signals in other direction. Those uh, undesired signals may be in terms of the back lobe or in terms of the side lobe. Now, there is no problem with the recognition of the beamforming application. There is a very uh, uh, easy example. Many of us have uh, seen that the IEEE at 02.11 is a WLAN application. So definitely this IEEE at 02.11 has so many variants A, B, G. So in all uh, laptops, we were using the A, B, G. In new laptops, we are also using different types of the variants of the IEEE. Uh, 802.11. So 802.11 AC variant is used to provide the beam forming. So that is a very good application that we are using uh, in today's scenario. 5G definitely uh, 
uh, is used for the beam forming for the massive memo as well as for the single user as well as for the multi user now uh, what is the mean by this beam forming definitely the power is concentrated or the utilization of the power can be done and the capacity can be improved we can improve the signal to noise ratio uh, similar to the mimo antennas uh, using the beamforming uh, technique so beamforming each element is fed separately so what is the mean by the beamforming that each antenna element is fed separately with the signal to be transmitted the phase and amplitude of each signal is then added constructively and destructively in such a way that they concentrate the energy into a narrow beam or a narrow lobe right so this is definitely to cover a user or to provide the access to the intended user only okay the beam forming can be steered if the user is moving because if the user is stable so a single beam can cover him or her but if the user is moving so definitely the beam should be steered and in such process the beam uh, forming is known as a beam steering so many of the electronically stable antennas are uh, the electronically beam formed antennas are used for uh, the coverage of the intended user or a particular group but there is no problem with a single user if you have the multiple uh, users and those are using the multiple beams and those users are uh, moving so definitely that will become a very big challenge in today's scenario because uh, this is not the case of uh, uh, population of 10 person or 20 person there is a population of 130 uh, uh, crore people right so so many beams are required here so this challenge is a very big challenge that how to cover the so many persons if all are moving now let's move further to the beam forming introduction am i audible am i audible yes sir yes sir slides are clearly visible yes yes they are visible yes, sir. okay thank you yes, so now uh, let us look at the uh, conventional array the conventional array is capable in providing the beam and that beam may have the bandwidth or the beam width especially the beam width is considered in case of the beam forming application so a uh, array that may be formed because of the uh, number of similar uh, antenna patches or the number of dissimilar antenna patches so that is used to provide any kind of the uh, a radiation pattern so that may cover uh, all the users that means the omnidirectional radiation pattern or the uh, broad directional radiation pattern but what we are doing in the beam forming that beam forming is a combination of so many uh, radiating patches which are arranged in a particular order in a uh, manner in the beam forming application so these all the arrays are combined in beam forming and they are fed uh, with the signal with the different phase as well as with the different amplitude so that the particular direction can be covered the coverage of this particular direction with the narrow beam is known as a beam forming array so this beam forming array definitely the special case in comparison with the uh, conventional array antennas now look at the another slide slide number 21 so if you look at the single radiating element definitely as uh, uh, beam width is uh, very very uh, large that may be able uh, uh, to cover the 360 uh, of the direction that means the omnidirectional radiation pattern can be formed to cover uh, different types of users but if uh, but if we use the two radiating elements or the two patches and if we fed them two radiating element with the same phase so definitely a main lobe beam is created along with uh, some of the side lobes so the direction of the main lobe is uh, 90 degree uh, uh, shown here right but the question is that if we increase the number of uh, uh, patches in a uh, array so we can uh, make a very very narrow beam of the uh, radiation pattern at the main lobe and the side lobe level can be reduced or the back lobe level can be reduced so in case of the four radiating elements you can look at the shape of the uh, radiation uh, beam or the uh, uh, main beam here so this is able to cover the large range this is able to cover the intended user this is able to cover 
uh, are utilize uh, uh, power allocated in the direction so definitely we have a uh, directional addition pattern in case of the four editing elements fed with the same phase so now uh, this is not the complete solution because the same phase is applied to all the four patches shown by the uh, yellow color here now look at the another scenario so what we have here that if these four elements denoted by the yellow covers here if fed with the 45 degree of the uh, sorry if fed with the uh, different phases right so we can get a beam in a particular direction so that's why we have to use a uh, phase shifters here so without the phase shifters definitely we cannot do the phase shifting so if these four uh, patch antennas in the array shown by the yellow color are fed with the different phases so in that case you can get the beam uh, main beam with the 45 degree phase shift similarly if if uh, we uh, fed the two uh, elements with the different phase another two elements with the different phase means we want to get the spectrum or the uh, beam width in plus 45 degree as well as in minus 45 degree so uh, let us uh, choose the set of the two uh, patch, these two patches uh, to provide a 45 degree of the uh, beam weight similarly uh, are in the direction of the 45 degree similarly the another beam is located uh, at the 45 degree right and these two narrow uh, beam uh, patterns are the radiation patterns are used to cover the two users here so now it's clear that if you fed the uh, array elements or the array patches with the same phase, you can get a, a straight beam. And if you want to find the beam forming and the coverage of the intended users, like the user one and the user two, so you have to choose a set of the uh, patches in the array, and they, those patches are fed with a uh, uh, certain phase so that we can get. Uh, the coverage of the 45 degree or minus 45 degree. So now let us start with the beam forming uh, techniques. There are different types of beam forming techniques are available. Some of them will work with the hardware like the antenna. Some of them will work uh, with the software or in wireless signal processing applications. So jointly our aim is to find out or cover those beam forming applications so that uh, we can make the beam forming uh, antennas as well as we can uh, use the beam forming signal processing applications. So number one we have analog beam forming application, digital beam forming application to get the best out of the analog and the digital the hybrid beam forming application can be used similarly we have the switch beam forming application so main detection of the switching beam forming application is the butler matrix so uh, in today's presentation our whole concentration will go to the butler matrix for the different frequency application for the beam steering or electronically beam steering similarly we have the adaptive beam forming uh, application now let us start with the analog beam forming so uh, if we uh, look at uh, figure number 8 towards the uh, analog beam forming we find that the same signal is sent with the different phases using the multiple antennas right so different phase shifters are used in analog beam forming and what is the m that the same signal is fed with the different phases now let us look at the digital beam forming so what is happening here that the base band is used to design the signal so what is the difference between the analog beam forming and the digital beam forming that the analog beam forming uses a same signal with the different phases between the transmit and receive operations are transmitters and the receivers and digital beam forming the signal is made in the base band right by controlling the phase and the amplitude of each of the antenna so this is the difference between the analog and the digital beam forming analog beam forming can be implemented with the help of the digital beam forming 
multiple addition pattern can be created using the digital beam forming so why uh, multiple addition patterns can be created using the digital beam forming definitely the answer is uh, uh, shown here in its definition that the digital baseband is used to design the different signals by controlling the phase and amplitude of each of the antenna located here so definitely digital beam forming can be a preferable choice in case of the non line of sight communication uh, uh, like the mimo antennas so uh, if you look at the types of the digital beam forming techniques uh, so we have two types of digital beam forming techniques one is uh, fixed digital beam forming so weights of the antennas are fixed here up to define here while in case of the adaptive digital beam forming techniques the weights can change and adopt in according to the uh, surrounding conditions right so a basic digital beam forming system would comprise of analog to digital converter and a digital circuit with basic analog building blocks right but what is happening here that one of the drawback of the digital beam forming technique is that it may result in certain errors as well as its signal to noise ratio will reduce so in order to come such type of uh, uh, scenarios like the reduction in the snr or the uh, increase in the uh, uh, errors so we always use the zero forcing uh, equalizer uh, method here for controlling of uh, uh, our enhancement of the noise and controlling of the errors now come to the hybrid beam forming technique it is an efficient and reliable for the 5g wireless applications what is the biggest advantage of the hybrid beam forming that this is a part of the massive memo right so massive memo uh, uh, okay we will not discuss uh, uh, anything about the massive memo in this presentation we will go through another webinar in future for the massive memo and i will cover those uh, most of the important things about uh, massive memo so now presently look at uh, that uh, how this uh, hybrid beam forming uh, can be used to increase the data rate or to reduce uh, uh, bit errors and uh, how this can be cost effective so definitely the designing uh, array antennas for the mimo uh, sorry for the um, millimeter wave application range is quite difficult because mm wave signals have very high path losses as it faces difficulties while propagating that means unable to go through the deep surfaces easily faded are being scattered or absorbed by the gases present in the air so to overcome the problem of such type of uh, 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 these uh, uh, scattering we require the hybrid beam forming technique so this will provide us the high data rate low cost utilization of the uh, energy efficiency as well as can control the fading noise as well as the co-channel interference can be reduced in uh, uh, hybrid beam forming technique now let's come to the switching beam forming technique so if you look at its definition here at the statement about the uh, uh, switched beam forming so what we uh, get uh, from this statement that the user or the system is able to switch between the multiple beams that are generated and can choose from one of the many predefined patterns and has a main lobe in the direction of the desired signal now one of the biggest example or the best example of the switch beam forming technique is the butler matrix i will show the components of the butler matrix in coming slides so uh, please remember that uh, butler matrix is used to form the uh, electronically stable beam forming or the switched beam forming uh, antennas for the 5g applications so shall we move further am i audible yes yes malviya ji move forward yes thank you sir so similarly we have the adaptive beam forming techniques in uh, adaptive beam forming techniques the complex weights of the incoming signals are calculated and multiplied with the output elements of each array in order to optimize the result in terms of the gain efficiency in terms of the snr sinr in terms of the data rate in terms of the capacity so these are all here optimized in the adaptive beam forming techniques right so uh, let's move further now and uh, after the coverage of uh, ciso mimo array 5g and in beam forming definitions 
and uh, their application how to form the beam forming so now let's uh, 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 let's move further in microwave devices and elements used in the beam forming so especially we will discuss here about the elements of uh, uh, the butler matrix only because we want to make the electronically steerable uh, beam here for the 5g application so now uh, i am starting with the lossless divider lossless divider is a three port network lossless divider is a three port network here whose input port has terminated at the uh, characteristic impedance denoted by the set node that is two other ports shown by the output ports are port number 2 and the port number 3 where we find the uh, z2 and the z3 impedances but the question is that if we form uh, this type of lossless divider with the help of the transmission lines or the microstrip lines so definitely at the join point we always find uh, b here that is the susceptance right because of this susceptance this three port network cannot become lossless and this is always show the energy storage element or the energy storage part so now the question is that uh, in case of the uh, microwave or in the 5g antenna arrays we uh, don't depend on such type of uh, uh, lossless uh, devices or the uh, dividers which have the susceptance here beta because the removal of this beta can be done with the help of uh, plus j b right so that thing we have already seen in case of uh, single stub matching as well as in uh, multi stub or two stub matching right so the removal of this minus j b can be done with the help of the plus j b and uh, uh, without the stub this will not show the uh, value of the characteristic impedance at a different ports so now let us uh, move further for the lossy or uh, resistive uh, divider right so if you look at the structure here in figure number 10 lossy or resistive divider what you find here it is three ports port number 1 is terminated or will show the value of the uh, image impedance or the iterative impedance or the correct impedance denoted by the set node similarly the port 2 also has the uh, uh, value of the set node seen at the port 2 as well as at the port 3 value of the uh, impedance image impedance is seen at the port 3 2 Uh, are one by the set node it's the biggest advantage of such type of networks but what we have to form uh, such type of uh, uh, these resistive dividers or three port networks that equal value of the resistors are used those are denoted by the r r r connected to port 1 port 2 and the port 3 so in that case uh, the ports are matched that means the isolation will become same at port number 2 and the port number 3 because port number 1 is used to transfer the signal from uh, Uh, port number 1 to port number 2 and 3 and there is a isolation between port number 2 to 3 as well as from 2 to 1 as well as from 3 to 1 so these are the match port that means the losses are very very low or negligible in such cases in comparison with the lossless uh, dividers now look at the another most important part of uh, uh, the butler matrix that is uh, known as uh, wilkinson power divider so i have to read something here where the pem pem is uh, transverse electromagnetic mode signal that may be of uh, any mode uh, is uh, applied to the port number 1 so equal in phase signals reach the resistor so resistor is denoted by the two set not here i'll show that why under root 2 set not is used here or two set not are uh, used here so no current flows through the resistor and equal signals emerge from ports 2 and 3 the wilkinson power divider is thus known as a 3 db power divider because there is no loss in the resistor denoted by the z not to z not here connected between the port number 2 and 3 so port 1 will be matched if the quarter wave section have a characteristic impedance of under root 2 z not so under root 2 means 1.414 so 1.414 z not if you multiply Uh, let us assume that the z not is a 50 ohm so 50 ohm is multiplied by uh, under root 2 means 1.414 so that will return in the 70.7 ohms right so this 70.7 ohm is nothing that is the lambda by 4 line at the quarter wave section so definitely the port 1 2 and the 3 are mesh for the maximum uh, transfer of the power in this quarter wave section between the port 1 to 2 or 1 to 3 are used to provide 
the maximum power transmission are the uh, uh, 3 dB of the distribution of the power at port 2 and the port 3. So that's why the Wilkinson power divider are known as the, also known as the 3 dB power divider. This under root 2. Set not okay. This is clear. This will return in the one point four one four multiplied by the fifty ohm. If set not is the fifty, characteristic impedance set not is the fifty ohm. Similarly, the two set not value of the resistor is connected between port two and three. So this is used to balance. This is used to solve the drawbacks of uh, uh, lossy uh, power divider or the lossless power divider. So this resistor is connected here. in practical scenarios this two set not is nothing that is a micro wave chip uh, is connected here in between the port number 2 and 3 because the value of uh, two set not uh, will become the 100 ohms in case of uh, 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 figure number 11 because 2 into 50 will become the 100 ohms so 100 ohm of the micro chip line either connected or the 100 ohm of the uh, resistor is connected and that will be available in the uh, ic only so we can find uh the negligible losses with the help of the wilkinson power divider and in comparison to the lossy power divider a lossless power dividers wilkinson power divider is mostly preferred application in case of the butler matrix so uh, let us combine uh, those all the advantages and disadvantages of the wilkinson power divider at the combine combiner it it has mesh output ports so if the mesh output ports means no reflections better isolation in comparison with lossless divider at t junction like the uh, uh, lossless divider or the lossy uh, recessive uh, divider similarly low insertion loss is here similarly the wide band circuit 2 is to 1 especially the 2 is to 1 uh, most of the antennas are designed for a uh, single page or for uh, different applications like the ultra wide band uh, w lane y max Uh, then LTE, 5G. So these are with respect to the 2 is to 1 VS, VSW. Our voltage starting wave ratio are with respect to the minus 10 dB return loss. Are with respect to the minus 10 dB impedance bandwidth. So we have the wide band uh, circuits because of uh, uh, this Wilkinson power divider uh, uh, design. And uh, if you look at the disadvantages here, so power handling capability uh, is slightly limited here. as well as uh, there is certain uh, uh, change in the insertion loss uh, because uh, this will not show a much better uh, result or very good uh, result in comparison to the reactive designs similarly uh, one of the drawback is uh, that uh, these are made up with the uh, micro chip lines or the strip lines and micro chip lines okay that may be used for 4g 5g uh, for lt as well as for the 6g or for the terahertz application but they still uh microchip lines or the strip lines have the limited power handling capabilities so now uh, let us uh, look at this slide i think uh, this slide is visible to everyone yes sir uh, is, yes sir yes sir okay thank you so shall we move further yes sir yes sir okay thank you so if you look at the resistive power divider so i have taken a case of the 50 ohm uh, resistive power divider three resistors are connected here each one of 16.7 ohm right so if you look at uh, uh, the amplitude response of the uh, uh, this uh, resistive power divider so what you uh, look here that is 6 db of the uh, uh, amplitude response can be seen uh, towards the dc or towards the lower frequencies but if we move towards the high frequencies then definitely this small uh, start decreasing towards the lower values right so this is one of the uh, biggest drawback uh, in case of the uh, uh, resistive power divider uh, and uh, if we go through the wilkinson power divider so in amplitude response what we can find here that the bandwidth that is the difference of the f high minus f low is shown by approximately the flat response flat amplitude response of 3 db right so this is one of the biggest advantage of the wilkinson power divider in comparison with the resistive power divider similarly there are no uh, much differences among uh, the phase responses of the resistive power divider as well as the wilkinson power divider but if we go through uh, this uh, return loss at the isolation curve the last curve 
uh, in this uh, figure number 12 what we find here that the return loss in case of the resistive power divider increases toward the high frequency right and if you look at the uh, isolation as well as the uh, uh, written loss in case of the Wilkinson power divider in a bandwidth denoted by the FH minus F low we find that in those bands uh, we have the uh, equal values of the uh, written losses and in those bands we have the complete isolation right from 2 to 3 or 3 to 2 that means 4 to 2 to 3 or 4 to 3 to 2 so that is again one of the uh, biggest advantage in case of the Wilkinson power divider <coughs> So please uh, don't forget that Wilkinson power divider is a part of the beamforming techniques. Wilkinson power divider is part of the 5G array. You can also use the Wilkinson power divider in so many applications. And this way, uh, whenever you want to cover a particular frequency band with the help of the Wilkinson power divider, so in that band, there should be the complete isolation because if the isolation is nothing, so the ports will start correlating that means they will uh, uh, reduce the performance in terms of the uh, gain efficiency or uh, range as well as radiation transmission so everything will be affected if uh, there is no complete isolation in the band now let us compare uh, uh, these are the results in a table form so uh, if we go through the of uh, point number a three year high frequency range so okay uh, there is no much difference among the applications of uh, resistive power divider or the Wilkinson power divider please consider on the column number one and two only because we are not covering the directional coupler here okay I will also cover uh, the quadrature hybrid because that is also the part of the beamforming technique so uh, resistive power divider uh, can have uh, the Wilkinson power divider uh, can have the frequencies uh, up to the uh, large range so there is no problem with the frequency range here and uh, uh, if you look at the resistive power divider so point number two low frequency range that is applicable for the DC but what about the Wilkinson power divider definitely this can be used for the gigahertz application or the hundreds of the megahertz application okay maximum practical bandwidth ratios uh, as a resistive power divider is applicable for the DC applications but here with Wilkinson power divider for the wide bandwidth 65 is to 1 similarly the insertion loss in case of the resistive power divider is 6 dB that we already seen in case of our amplitude response in the uh, resistive power divider but in case of the Wilkinson power divider we can extend the number of branches here and the insertion loss will depend on the tail log n where the n are the number of outputs or the number of branches in case of the Wilkinson power divider okay similarly the coupling ratio is uh, 3 dB because of 50 percent power can be seen at the port number 2 or 15 percent power 50 percent power can be seen at the port number 3 similarly the isolation in resistive uh, power divider uh, is limited up to the 6 dB but what is in case of the Wilkinson power divider so minimum value or the typical value can be the 20 dB so 20 dB is uh, not a very small value because if you want to design the uh, uh, UWB antennas, LT antennas, WLAN antennas, WIMAX antennas, 5G antennas for the arrays or 5G uh, MIMO array uh, antennas. So the 20 dB uh, of the isolation is uh, a very high value. That is not a very, very small value. But in case of uh, VSWR values of uh, uh, 3 to 1, uh, we find that the isolation may reduce because the bandwidth will shrink. So in case of the 3 to 1 VSWR uh, uh, designs, uh, this bandwidth is minus 60 sorry uh, written loss is minus 6 dB but in, in case of the 2 is to 1 VSWR bands we have uh, uh, the band bands are decided with the help of the minus 10 dB written loss so here the isolation and the written loss uh, can uh, be expected much better in case of the Wilkinson power divider uh, there is no uh, uh, disclosure about the directivity and uh, uh, directivity uh, about the uh, Wilkinson power divider and the resistor power divider because uh, we are not directing uh, uh, the signals in a particular direction if you look at a phase shift so zero phase shift is provided by uh, the resistor power divider as well as zero phase shift is provided by the Wilkinson power divider okay so now let's move further 
Now look at the 90 degree hybrid coupler. The design is uh, simple here because uh, uh, these are the examples of the uh, branch line couplers. When fed with input at port one produces equal amount of amplitude at port two and port three, but 90 degree flash difference at ports two and three. So this is one of the advantage here because the beam can be uh, formed in a particular direction by changing the phases. So this is a, one of the example that the 90 degree phase shifters or the hybrid phase shifters are shown here. Now Z0 upon under root 2 is nothing. That is the lambda by 4 quarter wave line characteristic impedance. The characteristic impedance seen uh, at the input port is denoted by the set naught. But having the length of the lambda by 4 means quarter wave line. Quarter wave lines are also known as matching transformers. So every of the line in case of the branch line coupler or the 90 degree hybrid coupler is denoted by the quarter wave length because we have to match the different ports. These ports are nothing. These may be used for input, for output and there must be the isolation between the different ports. So between the port 1 to port there must be the isolation. So port 4 must be isolated port 2 and 3 for the reception. So Z0 by root 2 is nothing. That is the impedance of the transmission line. Right. In previous case, we have seen that the impedance of the transmission line uh, was under root 2 into Z0. So that was a scenario according to the design. This is the scenario of Z0 upon under root 2 uh, for the 90 degree hybrid coupler or quadrature coupler. There is another design of the 90 degree hybrid coupler that the phase inverter can be located uh, in between the design and the different quarter wave section can be used here uh, uh, with the different uh, 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 resistances are the impedances denoted by Z A, Z B and Z C etc. So Z C uh, is uh, nothing that is also a microstrip line. But this time, this is especially designed to provide the phase inversion, desired phase inversion, or to provide the design of the 90 degree hybrid coupler. So this is modified uh, hybrid coupler. This is again the example of the branch line. Now look at the another branch line coupler. So uh, this another branch line coupler has the delay lines and a stub. So if you uh, look at uh, uh, this small section uh, located here between port 1 to 2 or between ports uh, 4 to uh, 3. So you find that these are the stubs, right? So these are used for the impedance matching. These are used for reducing the return loss. These are used for making the proper isolation among the different uh, branches or different uh, microchip lines, right? Similarly, uh, a microchip line here is uh, folded. Right. The purpose of the folding uh, in this microchip line is to reduce the size or to make the compact branch line coupler. So folding is done here for reduction of the size for compact design and strips are used here for the impedance matching for the uh, uh, reduction in the uh, return loss for the isolation among the different strip lines in this uh, hybrid uh, structure or the branch line structure. So now uh, let's come to the figure number 17 and now finally look at the uh, uh, combination of the different uh, element that we discussed uh, in previous slides here. So what we are uh, doing here that a zero degree uh, phase shifter can be formed, 45 degree phase shifter can be formed uh, depending on microchip lines, their structures are unique to form the phase shifters as well as there are so many different types of uh, uh, materials are also used and that may be uh, used with the microchip patch antennas to uh, provide the fast shipping operation, right? So these are the yellow colors are the representation of the microchip uh, uh, lines, microchip uh, lines here, right? So uh, here in a crossover, if you look at the Butler matrix, so what we are doing here, we are using the 90 degree uh, coupler here, right? And these 90 degree couplers have the uh, width according to the Z0 upon under root 2. So Z0 upon under root 2, uh, so that is the uh, uh, width and will show a particular impedance here. But some of the lines in this crossover of the Butler matrix is denoted by the Z0. So Z0 is nothing 
uh, this is the value of the 50 ohm right and the arcs are denoted by the r so these arcs are used to form the different types of the phase shifters for a particular value so shall we move further is there any problem yes sir you can move further Everything okay is thank you now. so hope that everybody is uh, everybody is enjoying the lecture and i think um, i am trying to deliver uh, those all the uh, current things of the wireless communication especially for the beam forming so i think everybody is agree with uh, this presentation till sir definitely yes malvi ji go ahead thank you sir so now uh, let us start with the switching uh, beam forming example number 1 so uh, i'll show here uh, that uh, we are using a taconic rf35 pc substrate right and uh, uh, this is the example i have taken uh, for the 8 cross 8 butler matrix right thickness of the substrate that means the pcb uh, substrate is 0.127 mm right and the loss tangent is 0.0014 now i need to disclose here something about the loss tangent here because uh, uh, for the lte w lane wimax applications you can use fr4 fr4 is full name of the fire retardant so fr4 is a dielectric material in case of the w lane wimax lte ultra wide band and uh, uh, fr4 has a loss tangent of 0.025 now if you look at the loss tangent here in second line so loss tangent of the taconic is denoted by 0.0014 please remember that the loss tangent decided how many losses can be occurred in that pcb are because of the dielectric material so depending on the loss tangent the cost may uh, become 10 times 20 times 40 times of the fr4 fr4 is a, a, a very low cost around 250 rupees per uh, square feet or Uh, up to the 400 rupees per square feet but if you look at the loss tangent uh, here so the cost will become very very high the subset cost of one square feet sheet may go up to the 10000 20000 for the 5g application so this is the biggest challenge that how the resource organization can bear such a cost because the maintenance and the resources are so much important uh, for designing of the 5g antennas or for the terahertz antennas So now uh, look at uh, the separation between uh, the two consecutive patches here are denoted by the uh, wavelength characteristic wavelength divided by the two so half wavelength at 25 gigahertz so butler matrix is used as a beam former here now if you look at the third point here the network yields beams in eight different directions because we have the eight cross eight butler matrix so eight cross eight butler matrix means eight input lines and the eight output lines so if we have eight output lines uh, please look at uh, this diagram denoted by the uh, figure number 18 here so 1 2 3 4 in uh, bottom side 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 these are the input lines used to transmit the signals and these are connected to the butler matrix that we have discussed are the different parts of the butler matrix are connected here so you can easily recognize here that there is a 90 degree hybrid uh -huh. coupler or the branch oh, line coupler uh -huh. as well as there is a phase shifter here so uh -huh. everything uh, is available uh -huh. here as well as uh, here we can find the uh -huh. crossover so everything is given here and the thickness of this lines are according to the मैसेज जो पढ़ा था ना ऐसा सिक्वेंस इज सिलेक्टेड सो 50 ओम लाइन फॉर 25 गीगा हर्ट्ज केस मे कम अप टू द 260 माइक्रोमीटर सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस दैट डिपेंडिंग ऑन द एप्लीकेशन द 50 ओम लाइन विथ कैन बी वेरिएबल इफ यू मूव फर्दर फ्रॉम द 25 गीगा हर्ट्ज सो यू कैन एक्सपेक्ट दैट व्हाट शुड बी द विथ ऑफ द दिस 50 ओम लाइन हियर सो 8 antenna is uh, arranged here to uh, the oh, output okay. ports so these eight uh, antennas oh, in a uh, antenna array are denoted by 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 now my question is that uh, what was the purpose of the butler matrix design so definitely the answer is that we want to make the electronically stable beam or we want to make uh, uh, 
the beam forming uh, with the help of the butler matrix this eight cross eight butler matrix so please uh, uh, look at that what should be the phase uh, or what should be the direction of the beam shown by these eight uh, elements denoted by 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 so i'm uh, uh, further moving in the previous slide number 40 so please uh, uh, go ahead uh, uh, throw uh, the point number 3 here the network yields uh, beams in eight different direction from the eight output ports right with equal powers and progressive phases so progressive phases means uh, one beam is located uh, in plus 22.5 uh, zero degree another beam is located in minus 22.50 degree third beam is located in 67.50 degree fourth beam is located in minus 67.50 degree fifth beam is located in 112.50 degree degree sixth beam is located in minus 112.50 degree seventh beam in 167.50 degree and eighth beam is located in minus 167.50 degree so that means the eight beams are uh, used here and if you have the eight users or eight groups so definitely those eight groups are covered here those eight groups will be safe secure and they can deal with their uh, transmission and the reception so these eight beams are created for the eight users or uh, the eight beams are created for the eight groups and uh, these are secure here so eight beams we can uh, get with the help of the uh, these uh, eight ports denoted by port number eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 of the but eight cross eight butler matrix. So eight inputs denoted by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right. So this is known as a switch beam antenna array. Now let us look at the, another example. So we want to design an antenna, uh, switch beam antenna for the 26 gigahertz. And what we are using here, we are using the antenna array of 10 cross 2 patch elements. Right, so uh, this is a different design because in case of the slide number uh, 18, you use the equal length, equal width of the antennas connected to the ports 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. But what is happening uh, here in example number 2, we want to use the 10 cross 2 patch antenna array. Right, we are using the Rogers RT Duride substrate now please remember uh, the rogers are not so easily available in india the rogers are uh, uh, available from the vendors only and the cost in the india of these roger substrates roger dielectric materials is around 15000 to 20000 rupees per square feet right but in most of the cases rogers company uh, is used to provide a solution of these uh, rogers uh, uh, pcbs at the dielectric substrate uh, throughout the uh, uh, world Okay, so here, if you look at uh, the line number four, the copper thickness on this Rogers dielectric substrate is 35 micrometer, right? For the lower frequency application uh, up to the 10 gigahertz or 10.6 gigahertz or less than the 15 gigahertz of the application, we can use the FR4 dielectric substrate and the thickness of the copper uh, in case of the FR4 dielectric substrate is 70 micrometer. So here in Rogers dielectric substrate, uh, the thickness of the copper is reduced, that is half of the FR4. So definitely this is uh, to reduce the copper losses here or the conduction losses in case of the 5G or antennas or the 5G beamforming techniques. Okay, isolations and reflection coefficient. Reflection coefficient is denoted by the 10 dB here in example number 2 in line number 5. So reflection coefficient uh, is nothing that is for the written loss that is uh, with respect to the 2 is to 1 uh, VSWR bandwidth and that is uh, also denoted by the minus 10 dB impedance bandwidth. Okay, so now uh, in this case, in the second last uh, uh, line, we find the 32 degree beam weight, right? Two beams with the 32 degree uh, beam weight, one may be uh, plus 32 degree, other may be plus 32 degree, uh, or uh, one may be uh, 45 degree plus or minus 45 degree. So this possible with the 32 degree beam weight here in case of the 10 cross 2 patch antenna. Now let us uh, go through the next slide here. Definitely uh, this is much more attractive type of the diagram shown here for the uh, switching beam forming in example number 2 shown by the slide number 19. Right, so look at the first part denoted by the port 1 or port 2. Uh, 
uh, which type of shape you are uh, uh, checking here uh, definitely this is the uh, hybrid coupler with the uh, delay lines as well as with the stub okay this is not completely visible because uh, this diagram is very big but the main attraction of uh, uh, this uh, figure number 19 is that we have the tapered patches right the first page has the lowest dimension the second page has uh, slightly higher dimension the third page is slightly higher dimension fourth page has slightly higher direction than the third fifth page has slightly higher direction uh, dimension than the uh, fourth one and then fifth and sixth pages have the equal dimension sixth page is same as the page number four seven page is same as the page number three eight page is same as the page number two and the ninth page is means the last page is same as uh, page number one right so this type of arrangement is always used to enhance the bandwidth this type of arrangement is always used to enhance the bandwidth because if you look at the two patches they have the variable dimension and variable dimension is always used to show the variation in the uh, inductance and the capacitance right so if we go through the uh, state of the different patches so definitely this is used to uh, change the values of the LC, LC, uh, inductance capacitance, inductance capacitance, inductance capacitance. So in that case, the wide bandwidth can be expected using such type of structures, but uh, uh, design will uh, uh, have the very big size, right? The overall structure will go very big here. And there is a problem here because if you want to control the faces, so you have to use the delay lines between the two patches, right? So, so one uh, array has tail elements connected to the this branch line coupler or the hybrid coupler uh, made up of the of the uh, stub and the delay lines and the second arm of this uh, hybrid coupler or the branch line coupler also has the tail element so that's why this structure is known as the two cross tail right or tail cross two so tail elements and the two ports tail elements and the two ports right so one cross stain, one cross stain will form the two cross stain elements here, right? So one beam may be in plus 45 degree, other beam may be in uh, minus 45 degree. The beam width is 32 degree here and uh, uh, how to control the faces. So we are using the delay lines between each of the set of the two patches here. So these delay lines are connected here in folded manner. Similarly, look at the example number three here. Definitely, again, we have a Butler matrix denoted by M. Transmission lines are used to transform from BM to the uh, antennas. And he the patches in the array may have the variation in their dimension. H. Right. So again, this is an example of 3, 4, 5, 5, 10. So this structure is now the four cross ten. So in case of the figure number nineteen, you have seen the two cross ten beam forming structure. And in case of the figure number twenty, you are looking at the four ports. So there are four input ports. Butter matrix is uh, designed with the help of the ninety degree hybrid coupler, with the help of the fast shifter, with the help of the crossover, and finally uh, the output ports of the Butler matrix are connected to the ten elements those 10 elements in the array are uh, in the tapered form means each of the next page is uh, uh, higher than the previous page so this antenna was designed for the 60 gigahertz of the application uh, there is no end of the designs using the butler matrix because uh, there are so many types of butler matrix are available in the research because uh, some of the butler matrix are available for the a lower frequency application like the WLAN 2.4 gigahertz for the 5.2 gigahertz but for the low frequency application the sizes will become very very high and finally if you design the PCBs using the Rogers or the Taconics so for a single uh, uh, Butler matrix for the uh, 2 cross 10 in case of the uh, lower frequency range like uh, 2.4 gigahertz the cost of the design may become 40 50 thousand rupees right but in case of the 5G, the cost may be uh, reduced because the sizes of uh, uh, the elements uh, with the higher frequencies uh, uh, will go very low, right? So sizes of the elements of the patches will go very, very small if you increase the frequency from 
10 gigahertz if you go to the 20 gigahertz so definitely the size of the patches will become very very small in comparison to 10 gigahertz if you go to the 40 gigahertz application so sizes of the patches will become very very much smaller than the uh, patches of the 20 gigahertz so now uh, the cost of the overall uh, implementation or the design of the 5g informing antennas is around 20,000 rupees in comparison with the uh, WLAN application because WLAN application requires a very big size. So cost will become very, very high in comparison to the 5G uh, beamforming antenna arrays. So now please uh, uh, look at uh, another scenario here, uh, here in uh, figure number 21 because in previous designs in figure number 20, figure number 19, figure number 18. So we have seen the case of the Butler matrix and uh, if you look at the uh, figure number 21, so uh, there is a unique uh, array structure here. Okay, I have not shown the ports here. This is again a two port structure. Five patches are connected in each array whose uh, uh, values are shown by uh, Z0, Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4. Okay, Z0 is not shown here. Separation between the two ports is denoted by the D0 here. First page is a rectangular micro C page. Uh, second one is the dual sighted. Uh, is it fit type of page here for the matching between uh, this uh, transmission line and the uh, page. Similarly, the uh, uh, third element of uh, uh, this uh, uh, beamforming array MIMO antenna uh, is again uh, double sided inside the uh, uh, fit type of a structure for the proper impedance matching between uh, the connected patches. The fourth one is uh, uh, is chopped from the two end that is denoted by the Z3 is chopped from the two ends. Now the question is that why this chopping uh, is important here? What is the role of this chopping? Because uh, one we are using as a rectangular page connected to the port, one or port two. Another we are using the exact feed from both the sides as well as uh, Z3 is denoted by the double sided chop page. <coughs> so the answer is that uh, in most of the applications when you use such type of uh, arrays you always find that the polarization is not completely the circular polarization not it is a linear polarization so uh, to convert this polarization and the circular polarization are in a linear polarization we require uh, certain type of uh, polarization uh, polarization shifting structure so uh, the cutting or the chopping of a rectangular page from uh, opposite corners that is shown in Z3 are used for the polarization adjustment or the uh, correction in the polarization so that the design will become completely linear polarized or completely circularly polarized. So we have the two ports here and definitely these two ports are not fed with the same signal because if you are uh, feeding, uh, feeding uh, these two ports with the same signal so this will show uh, a single beam and, then, and there will be no coverage of the direction that will be shown by the straight uh, uh, beam here. So these two ports are used here and whenever you use the two uh, antennas, when, whenever you use uh, the different phases and the amplitudes at the different ports, so this uh, will become the MIMO. So the new name of such structure can be a array MIMO beamforming structure here. So earlier we have discussed uh, about it MIMO can be used for the beamforming application. Okay, so you have the array antennas for the beamforming application as well as the array come MIMO or the MIMO antennas for the beamforming application. So these are the four examples that we have covered here uh, in our uh, beamforming applications with the help of Butler matrix as well as with the help of the MIMO antenna. So shall we move further? Is there any problem? Go ahead, go ahead, Maliaji. <laughs> okay, thank you, sir. Softwares uh, are available for the designing of the micro strip patch antenna arrays. Studio uh, in uh, micro studio. FECO software is also available. HFSS is also available. IE3D is also available no end of the softwares for the antenna design because if the world is moving or going to the advanced technology we have the different different 
uh, antenna design softwares are available every day right but the question is that why we are using these uh, different types of software so these softwares are uh, working on the different approaches because if we go through the hfss so finite element uh, method is used for the solving of the electromagnetic uh, designs like the uh, fast shifter antenna uh, then uh, microstrip lines or the filters so uh, if we uh, go through the cst now so you have the fdtd or fem or fit uh, em simulators are used to solve the uh, designs of antennas filters etc so these uh, all the softwares are recognized or utilized according to the approaches used here uh, for uh, solving the problem of antenna design or for filters or for fast shifters so now let's move further and uh, let us look here uh, that what is the MATLAB support is available for the design of the face array antenna okay array tool box, uh, tool boxes are available in the MATLAB uh, and there are so many facilities because the MATLAB our uh, MATLAB corporation is used to provide uh, software for the MATLAB in case of any of the software uh, are denoted by the different versions, uh, especially the version A and the version B. So every year we are getting the two versions from the MathWorks Corporation for the MATLAB and presently the MATLAB has a facility of the design of the 5G, LTE, WLAN uh, wireless application but definitely uh, this can be used for the software application if you want to design the hardware so you have to go through the CST, HFSAs, FACO, IE3D softwares but uh, for the signal processing application for uh, certain limited application uh, we can use a uh, uh, face array uh, system toolbox for the array antenna design that is available in the MATLAB so okay thank you so much uh, uh, for uh, listening passion corporation uh, cooperation yeah. and for the uh, presence here. So now uh, you all are free to ask the questions. Excuse me. Yes, sir. So this presentation is now over. <clears throat> so thank you so much for listening, cooperation, and great passion. Now you all are free to ask the questions. Thank you so much, sir. Sir, one question we have uh, from Professor Chawla. Hello. Yes, please. Uh, sir, it is 5G technology is point of contradictory in today's world. Your comments on this issue with harmful effects. Uh, may you please repeat the question? Yeah. 5G technology is point of contradictory in today's world. Your comments on this issue with harmful effects. Uh, actually, uh, if you look at uh, uh, if you look at the uh, health issues, right? So what we can find here that uh, there is no much research uh, have been done on the uh, uh, SAR. SAR is especially the uh, the word used for the specific absorption rate. That means uh, if you use any of the technology like the 5G beamforming or a MIMO or uh, ultra wide band or uh, LTE or GSM or GPRS, so there must be certain limits of the SAR, specific absorption rate, because whenever we want to hold uh, our mobile in hand, so definitely how much radiation can be absorbed by uh, our hand, or if you want to watch the movie or uh, checking certain videos, so how much radiation our eyes can uh, 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 mean absorb or if we uh, connect uh, our mobile or put it very close to the uh, ear, so how much radiation can be absorbed by uh, our uh, head or the ear in case of the use technology that may be the 4G, 5G uh, or anyone, right? So for the India, we have the 1.6 watt per kg of the SAR is limited our state is for the standard of the government uh, of the India for the 4G application but for the 5G the world has uh, nothing uh, till date because all are expecting that uh, uh, this may be done or that may be done but still there is no fixed uh, uh, standard for the specific absorption rate uh, in India for the 5G applications.
so any further question i think uh, sir is satisfied with my answer hello hello am i audible yes sir any so i think uh, sir is satisfied with my answer so any further question Hello, sir. Yes, please. Uh, sir, actually, what is your opinion uh, regarding exciting antenna arrays using higher order mode to enhance the gain? Uh, may you please repeat your question? Uh, sir, actually, I am talking of uh, uh, means uh, exciting antenna array at higher order mode so that we can enhance the gain of the total array. Uh, please remember that <coughs> the higher order modes. Uh, are dependent on that what we uh, what frequency uh, we are using right as well as we know that uh, the higher order modes are if you look at the formula of the frequency so f is given by one of under root uh, mu epsilon uh, or one upon two under root mu epsilon uh, under root of uh, m pi by uh, h square n pi by uh, p square and uh, p pi by Uh, w square right so here the uh, uh, page width and uh, uh, page length uh, plays a very important uh, important role as well as uh, the uh, dialectic subset height plays a very important role in deciding the higher order mode right so page length page width as well as the dialectic subset thickness uh, these are used to provide the higher order mode and if you are using the thick substrates so definitely the losses will become very high because uh, the thick substrates are the uh, 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 main source of the surface wave propagation uh, among the pores so we have to control the surface uh, wave propagation and um, this why in uh, uh, different designs we always uh, uh, create the holes in the substrates to control uh, the losses right so by controlling the losses uh, definitely we can uh, Uh, transmit uh, more and more power, but we have to look at the uh, size and the shape of the uh, page uh, length and uh, sorry patches as well as uh, the thickness of the substrate height. So, are you agree with my opinion? Uh, yes, sir. Actually, I was talking so because uh, especially when we are trying to design antennas uh, beyond 20 gigahertz or so, uh, as in the fundamental mode, the antennas are I mean size of the antenna is. Uh, becoming very small so uh, for making the fabrication inside the laboratory so if we can use the higher order modes then at least uh, we can uh, means uh, get the fabrication facility uh, utilize the fabrication facility and we can if uh, can be tuned in a proper way then the gain can also be enhanced uh, uh, because the effective aperture is more okay uh, i have to suggest one thing here uh, definitely the port uh, implementation uh, is not uh, 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 easily be done with the help of any of the uh, cst hfss or any of the software because the port uh, creation is a very big issue in case of the 5g or in 6g or in terahertz because the ports is dependent or the port dimension is dependent on the 50 ohm transmission line right so the transmission line is connected uh, are known as the feed line and can be used to uh, transfer the data Attached to the system from the board, so are uh, properly uh, fabricated, right? So in that case, uh, uh, one uh, uh, solution we can find here that the uh, uh, maximum power can be transferred from the port side through the uh, feeds or the transmission lines, right? And uh, please remember that if you uh, control the losses. so you can also use the uh, defected ground structures uh, in the back of uh, uh, those design patches right are in grounds so uh, if you go through the literature survey you can find that there are so many structures are available uh, still i suggest you to please go through uh, uh, my website uh, uh, research gate and uh, download the uh, 5g literature survey so you'll find so many uh, solutions uh, of your questions So please download the paper of 5G literature survey from my uh, research gate site. Ah uh, yes, sir, uh, definitely. Yes. Because I am already following you uh, on research gate. Uh, 
thank you yeah you and sir one uh, one more question is that because uh, the fr1 band means uh, those which are uh, sub at sub 6 gigahertz uh, bands so uh, uh, means uh, initially you are talking of internet of things so and uh, basically many people are talking that this is because uh, of the short range communication because that we are using the higher frequencies so the losses will be very high and uh, there is a chance of uh, absorption in biological uh, tissues also right. because right. of that reason people are talking that either point to point communication or short range communication but right. uh, i have also heard of some examples suppose you are coming uh, from office to home and uh, you are inside your car and uh, I means uh, they will be using the technology in such a way that uh, your ac will be automatically switched on at your home uh just uh, 20 minutes uh, before you come to home so in that way how that short range communication uh, is happening number one and the second point is that uh, means whether uh, they are using the sub 6 gigahertz band because they want to uh, means adopt the uh, adopt this particular technology with the existing 4g technology or uh, means it's purely for the point to point communication means i am in doubt Uh, okay uh, uh, so uh, let us look at uh, the different research uh, uh, literature survey uh, for the 5g and uh, uh, these uh, uh, applications uh, in uh, uh, arrays are in mimo so we find here uh, that uh, uh, <coughs> sorry so we find here uh, that this communication can be done right so many structures are designed and uh, there is no end of the research uh, in my one of the slide i showed that Uh, uh we are searching for the possibility to accommodate the previous generations like the 2g 3g 4g and the research is going on because uh, presently we have the two bands are available one is a fr1 that will cover the 3.3 gigahertz and 4.2 gigahertz of the application in the 5g and the higher bands will cover 24 gigahertz to the 70 gigahertz of the application but still uh, all the companies are trying to match the compatibility with the previous generations so uh, uh, in future we'll get uh, different types of uh, a uh, research and different type of solution now let us look at uh, uh, say you want to use your uh, mobile 5g mobile phone so the question is one of the important uh, part is it uh, how uh, we can control the radiation because if we uh, move further from the 2.2 gigahertz or from the uh, wifi that is located in uh, our uh, mobile phone application so uh, still uh, the radiation is controlled right but still we can find uh, some of the uh, pain in our body with uh, uh, wifi signals uh, that is because of our mobile phones but if you want to use a 5g antenna in uh, your mobile so definitely uh, the lower frequency band can be used and that may be a 3.3 or 3.4 gigahertz of the application but still uh, that will show the very high radiation so uh, these all the research are going on uh, so many companies like the uh, uh, so many companies uh, Uh, like the samsung uh, and uh, one plus uh, as well as uh, uh, some more companies have designed their phones and those are available in the market right or may come within a month here china south korea they have launched a 5g in their countries right so uh, still this is not a fixed solution uh, with the time the research will show you the best result and definitely i am also waiting for uh, such outcomes favorable outcomes because uh, um don't think that i am the expert because i am also learning from you or from those research papers yes sir thank you very much thank you sir okay thank you too any more question uh, any good after uh, good afternoon sir ha uh, good afternoon Uh, actually uh, in us slide the frequency for the 5g ex expected 3.4 and 4 gigahertz around so uh, i think this range of frequency in a uwb band ultra wide band okay so this, yeah this band is actually free for the research and other uh, uh, purpose so 5g also uh, the frequency range is free for the everyone uh actually uh please remember that uh, if you want to use a uh, certain application as per the uh, requirement of the human body or human needs right and that you want to put very close to your body so we cannot go through the very very high frequencies because at the very high frequencies the radiation become very very high 
right so that's why uh, uh, i i have shown uh, those two bands uh, in the low frequency spectrum of the 5g but i also uh, uh, shown a one um, line uh, highlighted line that the research is going on to accommodate the low frequency bands of the 2g 3g and the 4g right so research is going on uh, there is no concrete solution is available from that side till date yes okay sir. thank you any more questions hello yes hello. please hello uh, sir actually the page that i am are you type how is the page i have the element ah uh, your voice is not clear abhi tumhara system ki dikkat ho gayi hai sir hello your voice is not clear ha to ek bar restart karke kuch karo yes please uh, sir how to fix the phase of the array uh, input what uh, sir okay uh, please come back to the man fix acha acha uh, have you completed your question ni dekh raha hai ye chal raha hai okay so you want to ask about the fixing of the phase of the array khatam nahi hua na yeah. now, now please remember oh. that whenever you want to design a microchip oh, line definitely yeah, you have to fix its uh, impedance right mm -hmm. and in a particular way like trapezoidal or like a square wave you can find a different phase because of such type of structure right so depending on the banding of uh, uh, this square type of wave means uh, square type of a uh, microchip line in a particular arc are in a radius will show you the different phase similarly the height of uh, the uh, reference height of the upper line of uh, 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 the microchip line will also show you the variation in the phase right so because of these two parts one is the radius of the uh, uh, this microchip line at the corners in square shape as well as the height of the microchip line from its lowest end will show you the required phase so is the answer is clear yeah yes Bye. Okay. Thank you. Any more question? So, if no further queries, you can uh, please write your questions in my email ldmalvia at the rate of gmail dot com. So, I'll try to uh, give the best uh, from my side. Uh, anytime you can ask any queries uh, regarding the. Uh, MIMO antennas, terahertz antennas, uh, then uh, uh, LTE, ultra wideband. So uh, I may try to give the best possible answer and the solution for your all the queries. So thank you so much. Now Ashwin, please go further. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you, sir. Uh, now I request respected PDV Vary sir to please say a few words. Good afternoon, Ritika. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Good afternoon, sir. Okay, so first of all, I congratulate Professor L D Malviya for giving a very excellent lecture. Thank you so and, much, sir. Uh, and then, uh, as it happens, one hour lecture goes for two hours, so it remembers me because my Ravi is also a one hour ka lecture. Reta hai, two hours chalta rehta hai. So, <laughs> so in that sense, but it was very informative and very widespread. Uh, but before i thank other people let me sort of say few people who are very attentive to it of course uh, uh, apart from the presenter professor shekhar sharma has done a very excellent job in arranging maximum number of webinars from electronics and tc department so kal bhi ek tha aaj bhi ek hai kal bhi hoga parso bhi tha there are out of things so so shekhar sharma sir gets a you know, big uh, credit for uh, including people to have so many things There are a couple of things which are behind the screen, and every day 100% attendance people. One of them is of course Ashwin. Ashwin has, so he is always on Zoom or his own Google Meet. Hai. So he is expert of everything. He can play violin, he can play tabla, he can play the piano, he can play the so the speaker says I want on Zoom. Zoom will play. So the speaker says no, I want on. Like Malvi ji ne kaha aaj ki aapne ko Google Meet siye to Google Meet. Kal kuch aur hoga to chal jayega. Riti ka hai, of course. Um, comparing every day and handling the things keeping everybody um, 
you know excited about the things and compiling the things but i shall now speak about few students who were very attentive in professor malviya's lecture and i was looking through the chat box and one of them is sarthak singh i do not know some of them may be professor because yahan pata nahi chalta hai teacher kon hai jawan kon hai buddha kon hai safed bal ka kon let me introduce myself main 67 year ka buddha aadmi hu because people may think that age nahi to so apart from ritika ajay and shekhar sharma and ashwin and of course the speaker of the day the people who i am seeing very attentive they may be most of the name students i think is a sarthak singhal so sarthak singhal ek hai ek lavan shri rao karke hai ek insha magbul hai ek shabina abdul hai ek mohit hai ek vivek singh jadon hai so i think this is the strength that our student itna dekh raha hai and they are very attentive i think we should applaud for them uh, because it these all these things are knowledge sharing for teachers also but the main thing is for the future generation 5g 6g tak malviya ji rahenge fir 7g 8g 9g 10g aayega to ye ye livan shira aur yahi log usme jayenge but motivation hai professor malviya has of course compiled very nicely he started from ciso system they are the simplest one and they were satisfying people but aadmi hamesha hi kya kehta hai wo uske mood mein tha dil mange more so wo jo sirf voice hai to voice mein to data chahiye data nahi to mere ko वीडियो देखना है फिर वीडियो देखना तो गेम देखना है गेम देखना है तो मेरे को ऑटो कार चाहिए बट विदाउट माई मो वी कैन नॉट डू दिंग्स बिकॉज यू हैव लिमिटेशन ऑन अमाउंट ऑफ मैक्सिमम पावर दैट यू कैन ट्रांसमिट सो देन यू टॉक अबाउट फाइव जी देन यू टॉक अबाउट बीम फॉर्मिंग देन यू टॉक अबाउट वेरियट एलिमेंट ऑफ बीम फॉर्मिंग विल्किसन पावर डिवाइड एंड एडवांटेजेस यू टॉक अबाउट हाइब्रिड थिंग ब्रांच कपलर्स बटलर मेट्राइस ऑफ वेराइटी ऑफ टाइप ही टू बी एग्जाम्पल नंबर वन एग्जाम्पल नंबर टू एग्जाम नंबर थ्री एग्जाम्पल नंबर फोर about how different type of switching can be done in different type 8 by 8 10 by 2 types of array patching them we are so discussed about the material which is required not only the techniques pre started from applications went up to this thing but also from the roger material substrate or duroid state the proper thickness into that the losses how the return losses uh, can be minimized or how the isolation can be decoded we also talked about this 30 degree example and finally ended with large number of software so i think uh, if anybody is confused about which software is to be used he will have to go back to professor malviya to find out because uh, in one lecture it is difficult to cover everything but he has given a spectra of everything aur mujhe laga raha hai atma jo modi ji pradhan mantri keh rahe the atma nirbhar bharat agar karna hai to wo antenna se ek achhi shuruaat hai jahan se we can have variety of antennas for all sorts of application fir wo wifi ho wi max ho gaya ho gaya hai but why am i ho uwb ho uh, 5g ho or variety of things hai so i once again congratulate the speaker for um, thank you sir presentation using beamer i also could see he is using beamer for making presentation so one can see subtitles here and there and to this young team shekhar sharma sir you will also agree as yes, jo roz ho raha hai apne apne department mein har roz hi kuch jalsa hote rehta hai we are little bit excited people academically in the department एंड सो मच तो भी रिटायर हो गए दो साल हो गए फिर भी मैं एक्साइटेड रहता हूँ अगर डिपार्टमेंट में कुछ होते रहता है और आप लोग भी याद करते रहते हो बुलाते रहते सो थैंक्स टू द वर्ल्ड टीम एंड पर्टिकुलर टू दिस यंगस्टर्स आई शिल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द लोवेस्ट वन अजय परमार रितिका एंड अश्विन सो थैंक्स अलॉट फॉर गिविंग विद दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड आई इट इज ओवर टू प्रोफेसर शेखर शर्मा सर बिकॉज सर को कोई थैंक भी देता तो मैंने कहा मैं दे दूँ यहाँ से थैंक एंड ओवर टू यू अश्विन एंड शेखर शर्मा थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक्स थैंक यू वेरी मच सर Sir, thank you so thank much. Thank you so sir. much, sir. I just wish to convey my uh, regards to Professor Mehwale, sir. Sir, ये हमारे uh, establishments आते ही हैं. We are the ones who are eating fruits. लेकिन दिखता है उसका पौधा वाला और उसकी जड़ जो आपने पहले. It is all the blessing of you, and your foundations laid by you. So we are just uh, reaping the fruits of the same thing. Thank you so much, sir, for giving us support. And still, you are continuing with uh, the full encouragement. Thank you so much. Sir. So once Thank again, you. on behalf of Electronics and Telecommunication Department, I take this opportunity to thank Head of the Department, all the faculty members, and especially our speaker for today's session, respected Dr. L. D. Malviya sir. I also thank all the participants for joining this session and making it a successful one. hope we shall meet again with another informative session till then please be safe and stay at home thank you all of you thank you one more announcement for the participants we will paste the uh, we will post the feedback link in the whatsapp group 
please fill the feedback form and you will get the certificate in 3 to 4 days thank you thank you sir okay thank you ashwin uh, hello thank you. Uh, please announce the uh, next uh, webinar. Yeah, 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 we will talk just after this. Uh, oh, okay, okay, fine. Yeah. yeah. Ashwin, next webinar is who is it now? Sir, it's Monday. It's Monday, Jaya Madam. I'll send it to you on email and add it to me. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ashwin. Okay, sir. Thank you for nice words, kind words. Thank you, sir. Okay, bye.